I then came on to the center of the stage and I said to 275 people, you never have a second chance to make that vital first impression. And 275 hands went in the air and they all shouted out in unison, we can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> And that's because Bob, <laughs> who I'd given all my faith and trust to, had gotten to turn on my mic. <laughs> so the message was conveyed to Bob. There were some problems on the stage. And a few minutes later, I found myself coming on again and saying, <laughs> Well, did they laugh? <laughs> This is my second chance <laughs> to make that vital first impression. And the third of the people who couldn't speak English all pointed to their ears, or some of them managed to shout out, We can't hear you. Oh, no. And that's because Bob had forgot to check that my lapel microphone was lined up and linked into these five oh, translators oh, oh. sitting in their five booth to <laughs> translate into the five languages as I spoke. <laughs> And I said to myself, Judith, if that was your first impression, you can forget it. <laughs> How on earth are you going to get out of this deep hole into which you just crawled? And I am assuming that I am not alone. Of course, we've all done that kind of thing, have we not? Maybe not as dramatically as in front of 275 people, but I am assuming that all of us have from time to time said to ourselves, didn't handle that one very well. <laughs> Could have thought through that one better. If only I'd slept on it and let some time pass. Yeah, I could have come across so much more powerfully and professionally. It's not just me, is it? No. So, welcome to this session. <laughs> On Peacock Power, how to make a great first impression. My name is Judith Gilmore, I see why I was just talking. I do want to